Mr. President. Senator from Missouri. Mr. President, I ask that the quorum call be suspended. Without objection. Mr. President, on October the 7th, 2023, the terrorist organization Hamas invaded the state of Israel. Terrorists killed 1,400 Israeli civilians, including women and children, people asleep in their beds. They went door to door, shot Israelis in their homes, shot soldiers as they were asleep, unawares in their barracks. They wounded more than 3,700 civilians. That includes 31 Americans at least. Over a dozen Americans have been taken hostage and many, many more Israelis. It's the worst attack on the Jewish people and the state of Israel in 50 years. It is truly an existential threat to the state of Israel and really to the safety of Jewish Americans and Jewish people all across the world. But Mr. President, perhaps incredibly disturbing, maybe almost as disturbing as the facts of these terrible attacks themselves is the response of some people in this country, on our college campuses in this country, who promptly took to the streets, to the courtyards of these campuses, to the airwaves, to broadcast their support for this genocide against the people of Israel. That's right, I said their support for the genocide against the people of Israel. Listen to what these students said at Harvard University. Students wrote that, and I quote, they hold the Israeli regime entirely responsible, entirely responsible for all unfolding violence. Think about that. They hold the Israelis, the Jewish people, responsible for their own death and massacres. They hold the Jewish people responsible for their babies' heads being chopped off. They hold the Jewish people responsible for the homicidal maniacs who came to their doors and gunned them down in cold blood. They hold them responsible. Students at New York University School of Law wrote that they believe Israel bears full responsibility for this tremendous loss of life. Full responsibility. Students at Ohio State praise the heroic resistance in Gaza. Heroic. It's now heroic, heroic to massacre Jews in cold blood. It's now heroic to try and carry out a genocide against Jewish people. Students at the University of North Carolina said, it is our moral obligation to be in solidarity no matter the pathway to liberation, their word, that they choose. This includes violence. This includes violence. This is an out-and-out -out endorsement by American students for violence against Jewish people and the state of Israel. You know, it's not just Jews in Israel who are threatened by these outrageous remarks. Jewish Americans on our campuses have been threatened. Columbia University had to close their campus temporarily when an Israeli student was physically assaulted and Jewish American students threatened. Jewish American students have been threatened across the country in all sorts of settings, not least on our college campuses. And in the wake of this, campus leaders have been silent. They have refused to condemn this violent, virulent, genocidal, anti-Semitic rhetoric for what it is. Now, I want to be clear, Mr. President. I believe in our Constitution. The Constitution is the First Amendment. The First Amendment protects the right to free speech. And as I've said on this floor before, the First Amendment is the right to be wrong. So these students can say this kind of virulent, moral idiocy if they want, so long as they don't themselves encourage violence. Although I just say, when you say that this includes violence, that there ought to be violence, they're coming pretty darn close, pretty darn close. But let's just assume that their remarks are protected speech. That doesn't mean we have to endorse them. That doesn't mean we have to say, oh, yeah, it's fine. It's just another opinion. No, it's not just another opinion. Calling for the death of Jewish people is not just another opinion. Calling for the genocide, celebrating the genocide of Jewish babies is not just another opinion. Celebrating the assaults on Jewish people in this country is not just another opinion. And the Senate 
should be clear and stand with moral clarity and say, this is wrong. Can you say it in this country? I guess you can, but it's wrong. And frankly, it shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be hard to say we condemn this rhetoric, we recognize the right of Israel to exist. Talk about basic, basic principles here. And we recognize the right of Israel to defend itself. Things, by the way, that the president has said. Shouldn't be hard for this body to say it, but it is vital, morally necessary, in this moment of attack, in this moment, frankly, of danger for Jewish people in Israel, around the world, and sadly, on our college campuses. And so that's why, Mr. President, I've offered this resolution, along with my co-sponsors, that condemns the terrorist attacks by Hamas, that denounces this violent rhetoric here in the United States against Jewish people, Jewish Americans, and of course, the state of Israel, and recognizes the right of Israel to defend itself. It's a pretty simple amendment. And I can't imagine, Mr. President, what the objection to it would be. So I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the consideration of Senate Resolution 418, which is at the desk. I further ask that the resolution be agreed to, the preamble be agreed to, and that the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Mr. Is there Pre objection? Mr. President. Senator from Maryland. The Senator from Missouri is absolutely right about the horror of the Hamas terrorist attacks on Israel. I was at the Kafar Aza kibbutz at the end of June. That was the site of one of the massacres. 50 people gunned down, killed. Dads, moms, kids. We have to condemn the horror of the Hamas attack in the strongest terms. And we will, as a body, make sure that we stand by our ally and partner, Israel, as it prosecutes its fight against Hamas. Not only does Israel have the right to defend itself, it has an obligation and duty to its people to defend itself. And I am confident that in the coming days, the United States Senate will provide more than just words of support. Those are very important, and I want to applaud the President of the United States for what he's been doing, but also tangible support. This resolution is not about condemning Hamas's attacks on Israel. What this resolution does is condemn certain speech around the country. Now, let me just say to my colleague from Missouri, I stand with anybody and second to none when it comes to condemning anti-Semitism, whether in words or in actions. And I have stood up throughout my time in public service to do exactly that. And if the senator from Missouri wants to bring to the floor of the Senate a resolution condemning anti-Semitism, a resolution that points out what we just saw from the most recent FBI statistics about the rise in anti-Semitism, I will join with him in that effort. But this, what this resolution does is attempt to smear students, many of whom engaged in anti-Semitic remarks, but many who did not. And my view is that when you come to the Senate floor to pass such a resolution and you're talking about freedom of speech, it's very important not to paint a broad brush and condemn everybody engaging in speech. This is what this resolution does. It's an attempt to say even to those who had legitimate legitimate statements to make about war and peace to smear them all as making anti-Semitic remarks. I would also say to my colleague that there have been a lot of other anti-Semitic remarks around the country from radio show hosts to others. And if we want to make it a practice of regularly coming 
to condemn remarks, hateful remarks, whether anti-Semitic or racist or anti-gay or whatever it may be, then the United States Senate's going to have to think long and hard about doing exactly that. I heard you mention violence. Most of these protests, as repugnant as some of them were in terms of the words, were not violent. The one terrible violent hate crime we have seen in the United States since this Hamas's awful attacks was a six-year-old Palestinian-American Muslim boy in Chicago, stabbed 27 times. You mention here, whereas Columbia University was forced to close its campus to the public after an Israeli student was violently assaulted. I ask whether my colleague from Missouri wants to also include in a resolution violent acts that were hate crimes. The police have said these are hate crimes. He was attacked because he was a Muslim. I don't see any condemnation of that in this resolution. Nothing. So I would stand with my colleagues in standing up to hateful rhetoric, condemning anti-Semitism. But what this resolution does, what this resolution does is not that. I'd be happy to yield. What of the rhetoric that is cited specifically in the resolution, you talked about legitimate concerns. What, what specifically do you think is legitimate? I, I, I'm not suggesting to my colleague that any particular statement that he took out from these protests was a legitimate statement. No, but no, no. But what you are doing here, what you are doing here is smearing all of the students who engage in these protests. Yes, you are. And, 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 and that is wrong. And I would just invite you, again, to join with me, if we're going to get in this practice, and I don't suggest it, this is one of the reasons I'm here, of when there are terrible, hateful remarks made against any group, whether they be blacks or other minority groups, the United States Senate Senator, Maybe what's we'll weigh the in, smear? but, but in you this said we're issue, smearing student groups. What's the smear? Point me to the on language. This issue, there, there are there are student groups that may have legitimate concerns. For example, about just a minute. Legitimate concerns about the loss of innocent They're civilian not life by in this Gaza. Resolution. No, 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 no. But what you are doing is saying you're questioning based on certain anti remarks made by some students, Senator, you're we are questioning them all. We are condemning. I object. Mr. President. Mr. President. And, and Mr. President, no, if I may, Mr. President. I have to, I, I had Senator to run from down Missouri before I got another floor. meeting, but Thank I object. Uh, it, it's hard to believe that we've just heard on this floor. Defense of the most vile anti-Semitic rhetoric under the excuse that to call out specifically the specific statements and denounce them one at a time and say this is wrong, that that is somehow a smear. What that is is a failure of moral nerve. What it is is a failure of moral clarity. What it is is frankly sympathizing with this rhetoric. I don't know why it's so hard, but I guess we've now found out why college presidents won't come out and say this is wrong. We cite the specific words. Why is it wrong to say that it includes violence? Why is it wrong to condemn this? When students say the heroic resistance in Gaza should be praised, they're not referring to something in general. They're talking about the attack on Israel, the slaughter of innocent Israelis. And that's perfectly fine. Those are legitimate concerns. Oh, I mean, this is the moral equivalency, Mr. President, that has seeped into our college campuses and I guess to the floor of the United States Senate is unbelievable. But let there be no mistake, what's happened today is one senator has blocked this body from condemning the attacks against Jewish people in Israel, Jewish Americans in this nation, and pretended that there's some moral equivalency here between this and what? The, threat of, the state of Israel is under existential threat we have students in this country who are specifically calling 
for, and celebrating the killing of Jews, and we can't condemn that on the floor of the Senate? To say I'm disappointed is an understatement, Mr. President, but I will say this, it is a revealing moment. I yield the floor.